This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Oak City Church Morning Bible Worship. We are so happy to have you here with us this morning, and we will be blessed with a prayer by Brother Carl King. I say you want me to get up. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning in our right minds, Father. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen, Father. Thank you for all you've done in our lives. Lord, bless us to get closer to you. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all the things, for all the things that you do for us each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much. <clears throat> this time, we will have a scripture by the coolest usher on this side of heaven, Joyce Denise. <laughs> In the seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Joyce, you might be on mute. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Right. Um, so uh, I will be reading from uh, Romans 8. 35 through 39. Oh, great. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Amen. And thank you all so much. We want to remind you that women's prayer meeting and Bible study will be this Wednesday. It's every first and third, third Wednesday of the month at seven o'clock p.m. At this time, you, we will have a praise dance by Sister Brianna. <clears throat> Man. Look what you've done. How could you fall so far? You should be ashamed of yourself. So I was ashamed of myself. The lies I believed, they got some roots, they burn deep. I let them take a hold of my life. I let them take control of my life. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all the roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done, look what you've done to me. You spoke your truth into the lies of letting my heart believe. Look at me now, look how you made me new. The enemy did everything that he could do, oh, but look what you've done. Suddenly all the shame is gone. I thought I was too broke, and now I see you were breaking new ground inside of me. Standing in your presence, Lord, I can feel you digging all my roots up. I feel you healing all my wounds up. All I can say is hallelujah. Look what you've done. Look what you've done to me. You spoke your truth into the lies I let my heart believe. Look at me now. Look how you made me new. Oh, the enemy did everything that he could do. Oh, but 
Thank you so much. We appreciate that so, so much. Yeah. Now at this time, we're going to present our pastor, Bobby Ladd. Thank you. Amen. Give you another hand praise for the praise we focus on. I really enjoy the service, everything. The prayers are so good to see Brother Carl King pressing on despite all the health issues, still pressing on. Hold the scripture down, Pat, and um, the, uh, hold the prayer down, Pat. And then uh, Sister Joyce Fennessey is my favorite chapter in the New Testament, Romans 8. <laughs> um, Paul said at one point, I'm persuaded. And then the question is, are we persuaded? Do you know, do we believe? So we just have to be, we have to be like Paul. And, that, and of course, that praise was just awesome, uh, Brianna. Just, just so great to see these young people using the talent for the Lord. Um, you know, look what you've done. You know, began to cross the grave, beating up my heart, my mind, my soul, and my life. It's awesome. We'll give you another hand praise for what he's done. Amen. Amen. What you pray for me is I'm battling again. Find myself in a constant battle with health stuff. And uh, just, you know, continue to pray for me. I appreciate the prayers of the saints. I can feel them fighting for my voice this morning, like I was Thursday, just fighting for my voice. So y'all keep praying for me. And God is able. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, I had half a mind just to pass this morning because I was struggling so much Thursday. You with voice, and now I'm struggling again today. But I said, let me just kind of in season and out of season try to go for it. And I may not be as long as I would like to go, you know, or but I uh, just you know, let me just kind of in season and out of season. Right now, it seems out of season for me. <laughs> <laughs> so just kind of uh, try to fight on. So y'all just pray for me. So we're in uh, the rotation brings us to First Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We'll go there. <clears throat> Hey, Pastor Bobby, can I say one thing before you start? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Kind of plugging yeah. me a little bit. So, yeah, just get it on that. Go ahead. But uh, yeah, after, uh, after Joyce, uh, Sister Joyce read that passage, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, every time I read that or hear that, I think about. You may remember this um, when we were when we were in college, we were playing uh, in this intramural tournament, and Pastor Bobby was on the same team, and we lost uh, the last game before we went to the playoffs, and it was it was terrible because I first lost uh, in the whole time, and. Um, but we made it to the playoffs, so we, we wanted to be champions in the end. And at the time, there was a group called the Latinos who came out uh, with songs about the same time the wine the wine is did. And the Latinos had a song you can look up on the internet. It's called "We Will Be Champions in the End," mm -hmm. and that was a song. And part of that song, when they get through it, uh, they 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 say those same verses in Romans eight. You know, who should separate from the love of God? You know, it goes on with your death, your tribulation, all the way through, over and over again. And then he says, we'll be champions in the end. We're more than conquerors. And so for the next you know, week, and I mean several times throughout the day, <laughs> your Pastor Bobby, <laughs> we had it whole, everybody just kept saying, we'll be champions in the end. But Pastor Bobby was saying, <laughs> doing the scripture the whole time and getting us to that point. And so every time I hear that, I just have to say, we'll be champions in the end. <laughs> and we were. You know, we went on and we faced that same team in the playoffs and we beat them and we went on to be champions in the end. So it was just like, I always get happy when I hear that. 
because I had such a <laughs> fond memory of being champions. And then nothing can stop us, nothing get in our way. And uh, I was just, I was just so blessed by uh, those words when uh, Sister Joyce read those. So thought I'd just share that, get off my chest. Now I feel better. Amen. 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 I'm so glad you shared it. I do remember that. I yeah. do remember how despondent we were, and I do remember us kind of encouraging ourselves. And then, yeah, and then we were champions. <laughs> that, that was awesome. Thank you, Pastor Dad. That was, that was just great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we come now to uh, first Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and um, ask the um, a volunteer just lead us in prayer over the word, and uh, then we'll go into the um, try to cover maybe six or seven verses today. Um, uh, but ask the volunteer to just leave in prayer, anybody. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord God, to say thank you. To thank you for your goodness, to thank you for your mercy, to thank you for your great grace. Father, now as we <clears throat> study your word, God, we ask that you bless our pastor, Father. Bless him, no piss mouth, and you speak through him, God. What you would have us to hear, God. Give us to it individually and collectively, God. And let us not only be hearers, but be found being doers of the word of God. God, we thank you for your blessings today. Be with your servant, God, your humble servant down through the years. We thank you for your faithfulness of his life. Strengthen him for today's journey, God. You have men of us, God, that we eat from on high on today. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you go ahead and read verse one for me? Okay. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So um, Paul is getting ready to make some points, and he's preaching to these um, to these saints uh, largely about some sins, you know. But he has to um, he has to um, clarify who he is, and um, and for them to receive the word, he um, has to make them understand that he is who God sent to them. And it's funny about this Corinthian church, you know, we talked about how simple they were as a church, but, um, you know, they were like the, as I said, like the church in Las Vegas, if we were to do it today. But for all of the sinning that they did and all the patience he had, they accused him, as you see later, as you've already studied the book, they accused him of just being in it for the money. And he didn't care about us. He just wants what we have. And, and, and this was one church Paul didn't take anything from, and they still accused him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said, I robbed other churches, you know, to, to, to serve you. And he didn't take any money. They still can. He just really, he's setting us up, he, you know, and it's just a funny what goes through people's minds. But uh, he does say some interesting things here about ministry and about ministers as he begins to teach this uh, part of the lesson. He says, the way to look at us is that we are the servants of Christ, ministers of Christ, and we are stewards of the mysteries. In other words, God entrusted something to us. And what we have is a mystery. In other words, not everybody understands this. And we go through the New Testament, we see over and over again, the mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The fact that God would somehow indwell flesh through Jesus Christ and that he would be offered for our sins and be raised again. Uh, and that whosoever believes on him should be saved. That's the mystery uh, of, of God, the mystery of the gospel. It was such a mystery that, it, that according to Peter, even the angels desired to look into it. The angels couldn't understand how God was going to indwell man as a result of this. But he says, first, the way to look at me, he says, is, is, is I'm a servant of Christ and therefore a steward of the mystery of God. God has entrusted something to me and I got to give it to you. And that's what all of us ministers have in common. Uh, and even if you're just an ambassador for Christ, you have that in common. God has deposited in you a treasure, the gospel the Holy Spirit, and he has entrusted you with that, and you have to share that according to the ability God gives you. Go ahead, give me verse two, baby. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If I'm gonna put you in charge of anything, the the, the <coughs> body requirement is to be faithful. You have to be trustworthy, loyal. I have to know that you're gonna carry out the trust. And Paul, again, is remind them of who God is and and, and the fact that God chose them, the apostles, to give them the gospel should mean something to them. And so whenever you have a man or woman of God delivering God's message to you, you have to understand that God went through a vetting process. If that person's really called and qualified, and that person has been in charge to give you something. So that's why we come to church. That's why we listen to every letter. That's why we try to hone in, because God has put ministers around us to give us what we need to get us through what we're going to go through. So we have to be faithful there. And then he starts to come and make... Uh, uh, 
become a little more pointed in his remarks in verse three. Go ahead, give him verse three, baby. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. And so what happens here, and, and keep in mind that we call this the first Corinthians, uh, the, letter to, the first letter to Corinthians, but there was another letter, which um, uh, we'll, be, we'll see later in this book. Paul actually wrote another letter to them first. This is not the, matter of fact, we believe he wrote four letters to the Corinthians, only two of them God saw fit to include in scripture. But the very first letter, uh, we don't know what was in it. It wasn't God's intent that we have it, but we got the second letter here. But apparently they were judging Paul. And I don't know what he said or, or to them or whatnot, but, but, but they were kind of casting a spurs on his ministry. And he says, you know, I'm not really bothered by that. Now that's mature. <laughs> uh, I wish we could all say that. I wish I could say that, you know, and, and you know, not that I do a bad job in this area because I really have learned not to, not to be bothered, but as much, but, um, uh, but we need to come to a point where we're not bothered by what people think uh, as long as we've been right thing. Now we want to have a good witness, but if somebody wants to cast aspersions on you or, 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 or make negative remarks about you, that's the devil's job. The devil is just doing his job. And so Paul says here, which we can learn from, um, it's a small thing that I should be judged of you or man's judgment. He says, it's a small thing for me. And I, and I want to get to that point where how you evaluate me is just not that important. Only Every thing I care about is how God evaluates me. And, and, and it's a challenge for us. And, and that verse, it's a small, is it a small thing when somebody says something negative about you? I mean, some of us fall apart. You know, she said so-and-so about me, her. You know, he said so-and-so about me, him, of all people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he would do that. And, and so we slow the wagons down and we get out of the plan of God and we unusable for a day or two, a week or two. <laughs> Till we get over it. But Paul, this man of God who was sacrificing everything for these Corinthians, they, they, and, and they, was, they were really Corinthians in, in the true sense of how we use the word today. And he wasn't taking any money and laboring on them um, uh, to the extent of risking his life. And he says, it's a small thing. Y'all got negative things to say it's a small thing. And some of those negative things we'll find out later as we get into the book. But it's just amazing what they thought of him after all his sacrifice. And yet he said, it's a small thing. And the more you find yourself doing for people, the less likely you are to put up with what they have to say negatively. <laughs> like, do you know who I am? Do you know what I've done? Are you, have you forgotten? No, Paul said it's a small thing. A lot of wisdom in that for us. Um, this challenge we have in Christianity, it, it, it's just not a, it's not a job for, 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 for the week back. <clears throat> it is be pleasing to God and be a strong Christian. You have to put up with some stuff. And again, there's so much in verse three. It's a small thing. And this is scripture. Paul is not, Very you know, small. he's not playing around. He, he's saying it's a small thing. That's we judge of you or any man's judgment. He says, I don't even judge myself. And that's interesting because he says, I don't even evaluate my own effort. And then he gives an answer in verse four, which I read, for I know nothing by myself. In other words, I don't even know if what I believe about myself is correct. That's another mark of maturity there. I have an evaluation opinion of myself, but I don't even know if that's correct. And the fact that I believe I'm right, listen, saints, <laughs> the fact that I believe I'm right does not justify me. When we believe we're right, we're unstoppable. Everything is their game. I'm right about this. I know I'm right. I'm, you know, he says, even if I believe I'm right, basically, if I know nothing by myself, what I know by myself, I'm not justified. But everything is the judgment of God. The only thing that matters is how God views what I'm, how God evaluates what I'm doing. And that's it. What I, what you say doesn't matter. And even what I say doesn't matter about me. It's only God that justifies. I believe it was in Romans where he says, who without a judge, another man's servant, by the way. He says to his own master, he standeth up all. So it's only to God that the final judgment belongs. Very, very mature passages here. Very challenging. And in verse five, he starts to open this door a little bit more concerning judgment. 
He says, therefore, judge nothing before the time. Don't worry about what I'm doing in ministry and whether I'm right about how I do things and stop evaluating me as a minister. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. He says, God is going to come. So all this stuff is going to be exposed. Who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness, anything that in ministry, and in, in, in terms because the context here is clearly ministry. Let's get this straight. We're not going to have our sins exposed as believers. You know, that sin is forgiven. God's not going to go through and laundry list my sins. That's paid for. Thank God is covered. It's in the, as Dad used to say, it's in the sea of forgiveness. But concerning ministry, he says, God will expose what's going on. And even James says, my brothers, be not many teachers because we will see greater judgment. So in terms of ministers and ministries, God is going to expose some things here. And if you look at the context of this verse, you'll pretty much see that he's talking, going to explore motives. So those of us in ministry, Paul is letting his Corinthians know, don't judge me. God's going to expose not only the hidden things, but if you read the rest of this, he will make manifest the counsel of the heart. That's motives. God's going to expose ministers' motives at the judgment of Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important as ministers, whatever capacity you are, to have the right motive, have the right thing in your heart. It's not just enough to do the right thing. We have to work to the point where our heart is right. Because this verse is very clear. One of the things God will judge and evaluate is motive. Now, let's say something about judgment. Most of us on this call, we really believe there's two, there's many judgments in scripture, but we really believe there's two major judgments. Let me put it that way. One is what uh, Pastor John talked about last uh, Sunday, and we talked about, I think, several times through on Thursdays and whatnot, and over the course of our time here, is the judgment of Jesus Christ. That's where believers get evaluated. And that's a better way to look at that, probably, is just our evaluation. That's going to be a public evaluation. That's a judgment seat of Christ, the Bema, the evaluation seat of Christ. There's another judgment that's in Revelation 20 that's called the Great White Throne Judgment. And that's where people will be judged as best we understand by their quote unquote works, the things they have done. That will be for sinners. So they'll have their sins judged. Those who didn't come to Christ will be have their sins judged there at the great white throne judgment. And the outcome will not be positive because they will still be in their sins. Our sins were already judged. Somebody tell me where they were judged. Anybody? On the cross. At the cross. At the cross. We've already been judged for our sins. <laughs> and, 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 and you can answer this both ways and kind of be correct. But what we found guilty or innocent, and you can argue either way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want somebody, I want somebody. We, got, we were guilty, but Christ is innocent. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can argue both ways. I don't have a problem either way. Thank you. <clears throat> You could argue that we were found guilty and God said, you're guilty. And then he said, Christ, you're going to pay for it. You know, if, if, you're, if your kid gets out of your house and your seven-year-old kids and throws a rock through my window, I'm not looking for your kid to pay for it. I'm going to walk <laughs> back over your house. <laughs> I'm going to say, Brother Carl, this your son? <laughs> I'm holding, <coughs> even though the kid did it, I'm holding Carl Cuff. So even in our system, we see sometimes where we attribute guilt. This is your kid, you shouldn't have let him out. Now, it'd be amazing if my kid gets out and busts a window and somebody I don't even know comes over and says, Pastor Bob, looks like he's struggling. I, I see you struggling. I'm going to pay for that one. I'm going to tell you, he tells a neighbor, let this kid go. Let this daddy go. Whatever it costs, I'm going to cover it. We believe that's amazing. That's in a sense what God did, but God did on a greater scale. Our sins were judged at Calvary. 
So you could you could have been found guilty, and God said, you know what? There's not enough blood here to pay for this sin. There's, no, there's, there's nothing to, to accomplish. I will sacrifice myself and pay for your sins. You found guilty, but I will pay the price for you. It's amazing grace. So our sins were judged at Calvary, so we won't be judged by our sins. What Paul is saying here clearly, a uh, matter of fact, uh, there, there's some rejoicing we should do. Let's go, let's go to 1 John 4, but if you can put that up, then we'll come back to uh, 1 Corinthians. Let's go to 1 John 4 and look at, verse, let's start at verse 9 or 10. Put that up real quick, we'll come back and finish here. Uh, first John, um, first John four, beginning at verse nine. If you can put that on the, uh, put that on the screen, baby, Brittany. Let's see what the Bible says here. Uh, would, would I get, can I get a volunteer to go ahead and read, starting at verse nine? Give me, give me three, three or four verses, verse nine, and then pick another reader. Anybody? And and this, this was, go ahead, sir. For us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Okay. Give me the next verse. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation. That propitiation. Was, yes, sir. Of our sins. <laughs> right. And so we talked about this word before. But, but John's about to make a point here. And keep in mind, John preaches very hard against sin, very, very, very hard. But toward the end of the book, he says, let's talk about love. And he says, God demonstrated his love for us because he sent Jesus that we might live through him. What, what, it's interesting to see where he heads, the point he's heading to. First, he prefaces this, this thing he's going to talk about with love. And then says, not so much that we love God, <laughs> But God loved us. Obviously, you love somebody who saves you from the fire and does what God does and delivers you. But he says, the thing is that God loved us. He didn't have to do it, but he did. God didn't have to love you, but he did. Go ahead, Terry. Love, if God so loved us, we are also love, to love one another. He does a little preaching here. If God loves us this way, we ought to love one another. <clears throat> Next verse. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Comes back to uh, just emphasizing love, but where's he headed? Next verse. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Talks about how God loves us and given us his spirit. So God says some amazing things for us. Where's his point? Where's he headed? Go ahead. And we we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the savior of the world. He is really hammering his home. God fills the spirit, loved us, sent his son to be savior. Okay, John, I get it, but where are you headed here? Go ahead. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Talks about how just easy it is that God made salvation so accessible to us. <clears throat> Step up and own Jesus Christ and, and receive his righteousness. Go ahead. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Mm. Man, he, I, if I didn't understand God's love at this point, I would really say, okay, John is letting me know God loves him. I'm just happy now. God loved me, gave me spirit, <laughs> made salvation so accessible. And so I should feel good. I mean, I'm just, I'm just glad a savior. And now what does he say? What's the point he's making? Herein is our love made perfect. Here is the completion of the thing. Uh-huh. In the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So he hammered his point home about love so we understand. In the judgment, we're going to be in the hands of somebody who loves us. Wow. So we can have boldness. We don't have to fear. Oh. We have boldness. So I mean, he really hammered this message home. Saints, we ought not to fear judgment of God or standing for God in judgment. 
we ought to have boldness because of what the John mentioned. Anything about what we've done in that in that whole lead up to that? He talks about what God has done and how how would you feel if your judgment was in the hands of somebody who truly truly loves you? I want you to think about the person on earth who loves you the most, and what if they what if they were going to do the judgment for you? You had to stand before them. You wouldn't be worried. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you would not be worried. That is great. That's great. How much more does God love you? And you're going to be in his hands at judgment. We can have boldness. Father, here I am. We can rejoice. And this is what he's saying about this. <sighs> it's all based on love. We can have boldness in the day of judgment. <laughs> it's a phenomenal thing God has done. He sacrificed himself to make us right with him. And because his, because he is worth it, because he is worth it, and his blood is worth it, we can have boldness. I know my debt is paid. I know my debt is paid because God himself offered himself through Jesus Christ for my debt. I can have boldness in the edge of me. I was his greater love as no man than this. The man should lay down his life for his friends. God loved us. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. God commended his love for us in this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died on the cross for us. Amen. Boldness in the day of judgment. That's phenomenal. All right, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 4 and finish up. We'll finish up right there. It'll be nice. <laughs> Strong point. He says in verse five, now just, I'll just end here. I, I'm, I'll just have to end there. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. We're waiting for the Lord to come and give us our great rewards. We'll be in the hands of somebody who loves us. We'll be the judgment seat of Christ. He shall bring the light to hidden things of darkness or make manifest counsel of the heart. Then every man shall have praise of God. God will actually look at some and say, son, well done. Daughter, well done. Good job. <laughs> nothing, nothing the kid wants to hear from his parent more than that. And to hear the Lord say, well done, you know, that would just be the most phenomenal achievement ever he could accomplish in his life. So we'll stop there at verse uh, five for today. And I just want to end with, with um, the, the admonition from John. God has done so much for us that we can actually not only be saved, but we can stand there, you, with your account, with your faults and failures. And he's able to present you faultless because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, you can actually have boldness in the day of judgment. You know where you're going because your ticket's been paid, stamped by Jesus Christ, paid for with his precious blood. And if it's fullness and grace, we've all received. So saints, we have nothing to look forward to but joy. As this world kind of collapses around us, we see the wars and rumors of wars and whatnot. Let's take comfort in this. Our God, who loves us <laughs> more than anyone you can think of, has got us in his hands. He is our Father and our God. And we will stand before him one day with great joy, faultless, and we'll be in the hands of a loving God and greater love as no one ever showed than what he showed. God commended his love for us in this. Why were we yet sinners? Christ died for our sins and was raised again. All right, that's, uh, that's how we're going to stop today. Uh, and just think about having boldness in the day of judgment and just rejoice. And let's do all we can to hear the Lord say we're done and, 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 and to do our part. But knowing overall that the tickets, the ticket has been paid, tickets been punched, the price has been paid through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So uh, we'll stop there for the day, and I'll um, we'll give it to uh, Pastor John and, and Pastor Daryl, uh, Minister Harper. So, yeah. Praise the Lord! Everybody, come off mute and give Pastor uh, Lord a hand. Pastor Bobby today. 
wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm just so confident. My confidence meter ticked up so much higher <laughs> after this powerful word, the boldness. Um, wow. I mean, I'm just, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, me and live God. Uh, I love it. So, Pastor Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't want to say one thing. I got it. I'm processing it all. It's beautiful, beautiful, powerful, powerful word tonight. Today, I, I just enjoyed it. Thank God for it. Praise the Lord and thank you for a reminder of the word of where we need to be. Thank you so much. At this time, I want to welcome all of our visitors and our, of course, our members and family, and thank you for joining us. And if you've joined us for the first time, please feel welcome to join us whenever you, you're, you're always welcome. At this time, we're going to have our closing prayer by Brother Jonathan Davis. Amen. Are there any um, prayer requests? Uh, pray for Julian and uh, myself. This is Robin. We'll be uh, headed back down to Dallas Tuesday. It'll be my first time back in the office in two years oh wow <laughs> so i'm uh, preparing for culture socks so <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> absolutely <coughs> two unspoken okay. from me this is real okay absolutely uh, evangelist tyler i have uh unspoken request please okay absolutely uh, this is Brittany. Oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Mom. Go ahead, babe. Okay. Uh, this is Brittany. First, thank you all so much for praying for me throughout this process. Um, I This Wednesday is the day I submit my list of uh, programs. And so, and then March 18th is when I find out where I'm moving to for the next three or four years. So, <laughs> please keep me in prayer. Um, so, Wednesday is when I finally submit that list so amen absolutely amen okay i'm gonna ask the saints continue to pray for my dad for um his family um we kind of had a little powwow yesterday so just continue praying for peace there and we be led of the lord and work according to the lord's will and uh also the maxwell uh family continue amen keep me in your prayers and my family and my hubby our pastor. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, is there anyone else? Okay. Father God, we just thank you so much um, for another day. We thank you so much for your great, uh, your great grace and your love for us, God. Um, and we thank you so much that we can approach your throne and we can talk to you and have a relationship with you, um, even though we failed you and even though we're not worthy. Um, and, and so we just don't take for granted, God, this opportunity to, to stand before your throne. Um, and God, we just want to lift up these prayer requests. God, we want to pray for um, our pastor. God, we want to pray for his health. God, we want to pray that you would strengthen him, God. Um, we want to pray your continued faithfulness towards him. God, uh, we thank you so much for, for the teaching and for the gift that you've given him. And God, we just want to pray um, that you give him many more good years. God, we thank you for all the good years you've given him. And we just pray um, that, you, that you continue to be with him. Um, and God, we want to lift up um, Robin and Julian. God, please be with them as they travel. God, please go before them. Please, please bless them in their work. Um, God, we know that when, when, when we go places, we're not going alone. God, you said that you go before us and you go with us. And so, God, I just pray that you'd go with them. And God, I pray that they'd remain in the center of, of your will, God, and what you've called for them to do. Um, God, I pray that you would guide them. Um, and, and that they would that they would heed your voice, God, and, th and that at every instance um, they'd be where you want them to be. Um, and God, we just pray for Brittany um, as, as she has this opportunity. God, we pray that you'd open the doors for her that you intend to open for. Her. Um, and God, we pray that you lead her to the program that you have for. Her. God, you've already you've written her life um, a long time ago, God, and it's just up to her to follow follow your script, follow your direction. And so, God, we just pray that you'd give her wisdom um, as she makes these decisions. Um, God, we lift up Evangelist Tyler. God, you know what her needs are. God, we pray that you be with her. God, we pray that you continue to comfort, um, God, her and, and, uh, and Sherman and, and her family, God, through their loss. 
God, we just pray for your comfort and in, in your peace, God, um, in that situation. Uh, and God, we lift up grace as Father. God, we pray for your continued, um, continued grace and mercy, God, in this situation. God, we pray that you'd be with him. God, we pray that you'd be with the caretakers. And God, we pray that you'd be with um, Lady Grace, God, to continue to give her strength. And God, we just pray for ourselves, um, everyone in this line, as we go out uh, into this work week. God, please help us to continue to minister. Uh, please help us to be the light. Please help us not to respond to things, you know, that happen in the workplace in a worldly way, but to respond in a godly way so that people can see more of you. And God, please help us to maintain our calm and our peace, even in the midst of all the storms that we see going on in the world, because our hope is in you. It's not in the world. And so, God, I just pray that in the middle of everything, people would see that there's something different about us um, and in the way that we're, we're acting and the way we're reacting. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. 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 And Amen. thank you so much. Amen. At this time, we will have our giving opportunity. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. We have five ways to give. You can give through Cash App at Dollar Sign Oak City Church, Giveify at Oak City Church, Zelle at 405-778-4949, Oak City Church, comma, Inc. I -N -C, Inc. Venmo at Oak City Church, one word. Checks can be mailed to Oak City Community Church, P.O. Box 13642, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73113-1642. If you would like to speak to a pastor or minister, please call 405-778-4949. We thank you. We hope to see you on Facebook at 12 o'clock this afternoon. This concludes our morning Bible study worship service. Thank you so much for joining us.